Hey guys, I thought I would jump in and uh, say hello, do a video. I had a bit of a thought a few days ago that I might actually uh, show you some of the plants that I've been growing or, um, or how to grow a plant, maybe even that sort of thing. Because I actually saw it on an Instagram reel um, and it just reminded me of what I could do as the next step. So this video will be a little bit jumbled. I'm just going to call it a Mental Monday. So welcome to Mental Monday or Magic Monday. Pretty sure it's Monday. <laughs> That's what the day's been like. Um, but on my notepad last night, I also wrote down, do some videos and have heaps of fun. So this morning I haven't been doing many videos, but I have been having heaps of fun. Uh, the puppies and I have been dancing and stuff, but I've also been outside and doing a heap of yard work. So a lot of garden work and things. Um, and repotting plants for my friends where I'm staying. So um, that's fun. But what I want to show you first, okay, so let's do the plant side of things first. Um, I don't know if you ever did this when you're at school. I, I'm sure I learned it at school. Maybe I just learned it on the farm. But you put, um, we used to use the egg con containers, like the egg cartons, and you put cotton wool in the egg cartons and you put your seed in there and then you wet that cotton wool and you keep it moist and you put it on a windowsill or in a place where it will receive some sunlight you don't cook it so you don't put it out in the direct sun but where it will get sufficient sunlight and what happens is your seed starts to germinate so i have some of these that i have been working on i've actually got them in stages which is really cool so i like to repurpose stuff this is just a strawberry container that my friends had floating around and in here you will see, this has become like my little mini seed raising thing. So I didn't want to buy all new stuff. You can get a seed raising tray and uh, it has little spots. You put your seeds in there, put the lid on, you know, it's really cool. But I didn't want to do that. So I had a look around at what I could use. And I had one of these and it works really well. So it's got actually got a couple of holes in the top, but no holes in the bottom. You can see when I hold it that way, that I've actually got seeds in there on the paper towel. Um, but you could use cotton wool or uh, you could even use um, cheesecloth or um, any sort of material which will hold the moisture and allow in the light and, and that's what I think the key is don't quote me but I think that's what the key is with the white material or the lighter colored material um, and you just keep it moist so this has got condensation on it too because these guys have been sitting in the sun today so in here I have watermelon seeds. Now I love watermelon. I tell everyone to eat watermelon. Why? Because it's really good for muscular recovery. It's actually really good for muscles. Um, it's really good for your body. It's a whole food. So it helps us with amino acids and stuff like that too, which is really, really cool. You can drink watermelon juice after you've been training or add it into your smoothie after you've trained with your protein powder, whatever else your coach might be telling you to do. Um, and you will find it will just really help with the soreness but but it's just good for your body and watermelon hydrates too and who doesn't like cold watermelon on a really hot day right it's rare so in here I have my um, well used piece of paper towel uh, I've got a heap of little seedlings down here which I'll show you some in a minute and they've all gone through this paper towel so um, you want to wake your seed up because when you first get the seed from the um, collectors ideally you're going to get seeds which are heirloom seeds or you're going to get seeds which have come from an organic source in Australia the diggers club is amazing for that there's a heap of other places that you can get seeds from and what I'll do is I will keep editing this video as I come across the websites for different places around the world where you can get really good quality seeds because the idea with this my hope with this sharing with you what I do is that it helps you to uh, interact more with your life and to become self-sufficient right because that's the name of the game and, and that that will come later maybe maybe six months down the track I might share some of that stuff with you but anyway so in here I've got a well-used piece of paper and I have some little watermelon seeds and I haven't I haven't actually looked at these today I just had a quick peek then and I can see some stuff happening but so if you have a look, you will see that they're sitting in there and I'm waking them up. And the way that I wake them up is that I wet the towel and they sit in the sun. 
So there are actually a couple of them that have started to germinate. So you can see this one here, it's starting to shoot out of the seed. And that's the idea, right? So that's the roots that's coming out of the seed. Now I'm going to keep these guys in here. There's a few more down the bottom there that have started to germinate. So I'll keep those guys in there nice and moist and getting lots of sunlight for another couple of days. Um, some seeds take longer to wake up than others. I had zucchini seeds in here before and oh my god, they were awake like that afternoon. Um, I've also got Asian greens and beetroots down there and they were all awake really fast. But the watermelon seeds, they were a little bit old, but they were still good and I thought I'd just put them in and see which ones woke up and they're the ones that we plant, right? So that's step one. Step one, oh sorry, step one is getting good seeds. Not, do your best to not go into a store, okay, and buy them where they're just bulk packet seeds. Why? Because they've probably been modified, yeah? We wanna steer away from that. Let, let's get to those people that seed save and um, there's, there's actually lots of them, okay? There's, and with the Diggers Club, we call it Gardener's Porn, probably shouldn't say that, but the magazine that comes from them is amazing because it's got like you think there's only three different kinds of tomatoes if you go to the shop or something like that but no there's so many and there's these really cool big beefy tomatoes which have very few seeds and a lot of flesh um, and they're awesome for roasting uh, with balsamic vinegar and a little bit of salt or just balsamic vinegar and pepper and yeah they taste amazing but there's also um, other uses for them. So they're really good for making your passatas or your tomato sauces, those sort of things. There's heaps of stuff that you can go do. Anyway, I'm gonna show you the, so step one, get good seeds. Step two, wake them up. Step three, um, is like a transition period because not all seeds should go straight into the ground. You gotta prepare your garden, that's a whole other thing. Um, and The Hungry Gardener is the guy that I uh, watched this on. I haven't got his book with me, but it's a really cool book as well. Anyway, so you want to wake your seeds up and then you're just going to do the little transition bit, right? So I'll show you the zucchini. Now, on his video, um, Fabio, on his video, Fabian, Fabian, on his video anyway, um, The Hungry Gardener, he uh, had a like a soy milk container or um, a long life milk container, right? So I don't have any of those because I actually make, uh, I, I drink almond milk if I'm gonna have milk and I make it from scratch, so I milk my own almonds. <laughs> um, so I don't have any of those containers, but what I do have, what my friends have here is a heap of these Chinese takeaway type containers. Um, and why do they have them? They have them because um, of where they work, you know, that sort of stuff. Anyway. In here are toilet rolls, right? Now, I know with whatever everybody did with the toilet paper fucking last year, right? In 2020, in Australia anyway, there was very little toilet paper on the shelves. I don't know what people were doing with it. They must have thought that that would prevent them from contracting something. But it was fascinating for me, and this is a side note, like I said, mental video. Um, fascinating for me because the food that people were also choosing to take off the shelf would just clog their system up so they wouldn't be shitting anyway so why would they need all the toilet paper but irrespective I know that you've got toilet paper rolls somewhere right so what you do is you fill them with dirt so these little guys they're wet so I don't want to tip them over but they have been filled with dirt the trick that I found with that was to Get a bucket and put your good soil in there so you might have seed raising mix or you might mix up your own which with um, some some compost and some garden soil maybe a little bit of potty mix you know all that sort of stuff get your toilet roll and scoop it right and then put your hand on the bottom of the toilet roll on one end and pack it down with the other one then what you can do is flip it upside down really quick into your container happy days and top the rest of it up with soil then I took my sprouted seed, these are zucchini seeds, my sprouted seeds and dropped them in there and just covered them up with a bit more dirt. So as you can see, these guys have just gone ballistic. Oh, don't fall over. Um, now, this is the seed, right? So this is called a dicotyledon or a dicot. Why? It's got two leaves. It has two seed leaves. 
So when the little seed germinates and it shoots out that first bit, that's the root system. So you'll see it, it'll go everywhere with zucchinis. Um, then come the little seeds and the seeds, these seeds won't stay with this plant. They're just there to provide the plant with food and fuel while it grows. Um, and it kicks off the seed pod, right? So the other two, there's one in the bottom there, there's a seed pod down there, because this one's kicked it off already. So this one hasn't kicked it off yet. It's like a chicken coming out of an egg, right? Um, cool, I've also got dragonfly wings on one of these. And then these little dudes in here, they are um, pak choy, I think. So there's some Asian greens, which I just threw the seeds in, because they sprouted really fast too. Anyway, the next trick is to keep the water up. So you just put the water into the container. You can see these rolls are damp. I'm not pouring the water in the top. I'm putting the water in the container. And on his video, he pours water into the container as well. And that encourages the roots of your plants to go down to get their water, but it also keeps them moist. You keep these guys sitting in the sunlight again, not direct sunlight, just, oh, sorry, indirect sunlight indoors. Um, if you've got them outside, put them in a spot that is a bit shaded so that they're not roasted by the sun straight away because they're babies, you've got to look after them. Now, what I will do is I'm going to give a couple of these to some friends um, who have just started their gardening journey and I'm also going to plant two of them in two tubs out the front in the garden to make the front garden productive. So the back garden is pretty productive. Uh, I pretty much eat just from the garden, um, which is really cool. And then the front garden is, at the moment, a lot of uh, plants that look nice and that smell nice and attract bees and insects, pollinators, things that you need. Uh, but there's not a lot of productivity in the front garden. So these guys will go out the front, but they will go in huge tubs because zucchinis love to sprawl everywhere. With the Asian greens, you can plant them year round and you can actually keep them inside which is really cool so you can have leafy greens too so garden tip right 12 minutes worth of garden put those little guys back put my watermelon seeds back into the sun okay what's the other thing that I've been doing so the other stuff that I've been doing I realized that I really don't like lavender <laughs> dare I say it I work with essential oils and I really love doing those videos. So I've got some friends that are getting essential oils for Christmas. Um, so I will do private videos for them so they'll get a link along with their Christmas gifts. That is me sharing how to use those oils. So um, the information that I will share on those videos, I probably can't share publicly. Uh, but that's cool. So I will do more videos on essential oils and some different plants that I've been working with. Ah, remind me to talk to you about Tulsi, which is also called um, Ossimum Sanctum. Uh, it's holy basil. Phenomenal plant. I'm going to get one so that I can show you. Anyway, digress. Um, yeah, I really don't like lavender. How do I know that? Because Anch has a huge lavender bush out the front. Two of them actually. And I've had to cut them back uh because it's just that time of year and they're getting quite bushy so if there were no humans on this earth it would not take long for mother nature to to take everything over right it all you got to do is watch the grass just have a look at grass with runners especially buffalo grass so walter buffalo grass it has a runner and um that runner uh shoots off the lawn shoots and if you're an avid um, yardscaper you're always outside fiddling with the grass right because it grows really fast before you know it it's taking over um, so I feel like if we all just fucked off and left everything alone for a while, we would come back to houses that would be just covered with grass, right? I, I can see that, especially if you've got a yard that's got grass. And lavender, my God, this, these bushes are huge. So um, I had to prune them. Now, I work with the lavender essential oil. The scent is not my most favorite thing. However, it works extremely well to calm your system down. So if you're a hay fever person, uh, you will work with lavender with some other oils in a certain way. 
However, the plant itself, I find it to be quite dusty. So the other thing I've been doing is working with the lavender. Uh, doesn't make me tired, it actually works in reverse. Maybe that's why I've had so much energy the last few days. Um, and if you look at this, right, the leaves are a bit furry, sort of, because the leaves have scent too. So it's not just the flower, these flowers are starting to dry out now, so it's normally purple flowers. The leaves have scents as well. So I'm all right with the scent from a distance, but working really close to prune this bush back um, has proved to be a bit of a challenge. The puffy face, puffy eyes, <clears throat> um, itchy throat, you know, that sort of stuff. So why, because of the, I reckon it's because of all the fibrous stuff that's on it. So it's quite itchy. That's cute. That's a little seed pod in there. Um, it's quite furry, soft, yep, really delicate. But what I've done is I've bundled it up. So there's an enormous amount of sage in the backyard too. So I'm going to hack the sage back and I'm going to put sage with the lavender, dry it out, add some rose petals from all the roses that um, have been blooming and then dying um, which by the way you can throw back into the garden for composting plants do like that however I'm gonna pack them together in like ceremonial sticks or little ritual packs I'll just put that back down there <clears throat> so that's the other thing that I've been doing heaps of stuff outside then I've been working with rocks uh, I'm currently living with some people that are keen rock hounds rock doctors and um, yeah, it's working with uh, smoky quartz, which is pretty cool. So you'll be able to see that. Uh, and, excuse me for a minute. <laughs> Lavender. Um, and also uh, all the little pieces too. Oh, where's the camera? Okay, so that's a piece of smoky quartz and that's directly how it's come out of the ground. How cool is that? It's already got the pattern and everything. So I've been doing that uh, to wrap wire jewelry right i learned how to do that so that's a pendant that i think looks like a perfume bottle it's pretty cool um then we've got another pendant which i've done uh, these little guys are pretty cool um just just doing different stuff right but i was sitting down and i'd mucked up a piece and i really didn't have the heart to undo it and i looked at it and uh, all i had was that center bit right this is all smoky quartz too by the way okay so all i had was that centerpiece with the wire with the wrapping with the twist and i'd stuffed up and this was the end bit it broke right so i didn't want to pull it apart and i saw this little piece sitting there on the table so i picked it up and just sat it on the wire like that and i looked at it and it was just like just like that no no legs just this and this and i thought oh that looks like an ant so I turn it into an ant. Okay, I found a, a piece for the base, which sits a little bit down, um, but fitted really, really well with the middle bit and just um, wrapped it all. Now I did use tiny, tiny little spot of glue to hold the stones together. And then I just gave him legs. So um, yeah, I've been doing that sort of stuff. I'm starting to make a human body out of crystals and wire. I've got the spine and I have the skull, so I need to do a little bit of carving work with that. Um, but that'll be pretty cool. That'll probably be a long, bit of a long-term project. Um, what else? Heaps of planting stuff, heaps of writing, uh, a few videos. Oh, colouring in. I've got some good books that I've been reading if anyone's interested. Okay, so um, The Proof is in the Plants by Simon Hill. This is actually a good book. Some of it is a little bit... Uh, uh, to me boring to read let's put it that way but the majority of it is actually really good there's a chapter in here about eating to keep your brain young to prevent cardiovascular to help with your body weight and how to shift from a diet which is predominantly influenced by food industry which is dairy industry meat industry egg industry like which is primarily driven by external factors into a diet which is um, diet whatever you want to call it, into a way of eating that is actually based more on nourishment that you can get from plants. Because it's amazing how similar our structure is as a human to a plant structure. That's the other thing I've been noticing as I've been doing a lot more yard work, 
is um, like the root system, for example, on a dandelion or, or a, uh, any other dicotyledon plant, dicot plant, they have a tap root. It looks like our spine. And then it has all these other little furry roots off it. it looks like our nervous system. And it operates in the same way. So those things feed the mind of the plant. You know, plants respond really well to music. This is all this really cool stuff. Um, okay, so I've been reading his book coloring in with the stuff that I got myself. In times of great stress or adversity, it's always best to keep busy, to plow your anger and your energy into something positive, apparently, according to Lee Lacocca. Um, I don't know, I like chilling out. So, just been coloring in and doing that sort of stuff. Totally random video, guys. Had heaps of energy the last couple of days because I always seem to do that with the new moon because we had new moon energy dropping in. What do you do on the new moon? You plant new seeds, right? You plant new seeds of intention. What do you want to bring in? The new moon for me is also middle of the month in terms of the clan mothers. So I do have videos up already on these ladies, these wise ladies. Uh, and we are in the middle of Walks Tall Woman. Uh, which is the clan mother of the 11th moon cycle. We won't be clicking into the 12th moon cycle until the, the upcoming full moon, which is in December anyway. Um, so I've been, I always read this. It's the same, same clan mothers every year. However, your journey with them deepens or changes. I say that all the time. The other thing that I've been doing is a um, bit of coaching, bit of um, development work, mindset development, personal development, professional development, whatever you want to call it, executive coaching. Um, I did do a little bit of a contract and had a look at the structures and the systems in place and observed the direction of that particular organisational unit and where it was going to end up and then just provided management with a little bit of a tool to help them. Um, but what I have found lately, given what's going on, is that I've been working with a lot of people around this, which is gene keys. So there's heaps of videos. I like Tan's Tan Astrology videos. She does gene keys. So if you just um, look on YouTube for gene keys, you'll find them. Uh, this is really good, uh, this book. It's the gene keys are based on I Ching. This book is by Richard Rudd. He's someone who has helped people to be able to totally understand the system, if you like. There's 64 gene keys. Uh, all of us is quite unique. Why are we unique? Even though we're all the same, similar to other organisms, we're all unique because not one of us was born at exactly the same time in exactly the same location on exactly the same day, which means that we all have something different within our cellular structure which is required for the journey that we're on um, so if you haven't looked at gene keys maybe you work with human design I've met a few people that do that as well um, the gene keys is the I Ching system so it's human design but I just find for me uh, and for the people that I work with this makes a little bit more sense and um, it is just good in terms of providing stimulation for your grey matter that isn't just scrolling through something, right? So I've been working on that too. Now, the uh, I don't think I've done any of these videos live either. I need to do some more of the Celestine Prophecies insights and share those too. Um, but what I used to do inside my Facebook group before I locked myself out of Facebook and honestly can't be bothered to log back in again. I used to do a card reading every new moon for the people in that group. I miss the groups. Uh, however, there's not that much that I can do about it until I work out a way for bringing us together in some other platform or um, place. So maybe doing these videos and shifting across to my blog so that the videos are continuously there might be the way to do it. But anyway, so what I thought I would do is introduce you to the cards that I've been fiddling with since I've been back on this side of the country. And they are the Oracle of the Shapeshifters by Lucy Cavendish. 
I like them because they're a little bit Tim Burton-ish in terms of their graphics, okay? Um, if you haven't ever seen anything that Tim Burton does, you need to check it out. Uh, you may or may not be into that sort of stuff. That's cool, whatever floats your boat, but I like it. Now, um, gee, I've been having a bit of fun with these cards. Uh, for me, the last few weeks, I keep getting this little guy, Dragon and Guardian, A New World is Born. It's card number 45, and it's actually really cool. And this card it talks about us working with nature and as a collective being given gifts which were taken away. Uh, why? Because we've shown through our actions that, um, and our thoughts that we are changing, that we are shifting. Uh, my Native American Indian friends share with me a lot of information as well. Um, and they are just watching, you know, it's, it's quite fascinating to see the busyness of some societies in comparison to others and the wisdom that drops out of those ones that are not as busy, if that makes sense. So because, uh, you know, we're not alone. So because there's, I'm trying to think of the words, <clears throat> maybe I don't need them. Because we have shown through actions some of us, majority of us, that we are shifting. Uh, we have been given back uh, things that were not there before, a long time ago. And one of the, well, that must be our card. One of the things that we have been given back is the um, capacity to work with different creatures and dragons are one of them. Okay, what do we got? Oh, this is a bit interesting. So this is like, when I used to do the readings before, it was a new moon reading for the collective, for the group. So this is our card that we've gotten, which is the black cat. And it's about lost magic. It's about atonement and it's about rebalancing. I haven't seen this card in this deck yet, um, but obviously a few of us need it. For me, I see the crows on there. The crows are my friends. Um, Medicine Crow in particular, someone that I know really well. Uh, I've met another couple of people, Native American Indians, that um, have crow in their name. But let's have a look at what this card's talking about. So it's card number 30. <coughs> wow, that lavender really lifted me. So it's a mess the message is it's a time to make amends, atonement and balance. The black cat speaks, it is, I say, time to be softer and to say sorry, to acknowledge unfortunate words and harsh behaviour and apologise and then forgive yourself. Something sad has happened. Oh yes, if we think about what humanity has been doing to itself and the planet, yep, something sad has happened. The landscape around you is bereft, empty. It is sad and you feel lonely and somehow like the world is a void. The harvest has come and gone and it feels and it feels you have been left with nothing and someone has been hurt. They too feel they have nothing. Well, nothing except for this magical black cat and the raven and their magics. You see, they are all here for you now. You do feel very sad and like you have been most unjustly treated, but you must see that you have somehow created this situation you find yourself in. Harsh words have been said, laws of friendship and hospitality and kindness have been broken. And so it is time to speak words of kinship and friendship and to live once again in a kind and hospitable way. It is time to plant new seeds, perfect time for new moon. And you can still jump on this, okay? New moon, you can still plant new seeds, make a wish. And it's time to plant new seeds in this abandoned and lonely landscape. There will be new growth and it will be well again but it may take an acknowledgement of your own part in this sad tale to understand fully how to bring your life back to richness and beauty. Um, that's pretty pertinent. So have a look about uh, what's happening around you and in your life and, and ask yourself, how did I contribute to this? And then just write it down and burn it if you like, or think about it and journal on it. So I do do those self mastery talks when I'm talking about journaling. Um, and acknowledge and accept 
the, you know, take your, your, take responsibility for your actions, um, and then be open to the support for the rehabilitation or the recovery, if you like. Um, about the black cat, someone has tried very hard to be harsh and to scare away the loneliness and pain inside them that has led to their callous words and even cruelty at times. They have spoken such ugly things because they have not yet owned inside themselves their scars and pain. So yeah, it's, it's internal work, accepting what is, accepting what's been, um, but also doing the work yourself uh, and moving forward. They have tried to inflict others with similar cares so they don't feel so alone. But it is time now to see that although the scarecrow can be put up, the laws of karma cannot be denied. The raven will land and laws, law will be done. The truth will come out and a sorry will be said. The sad little forlorn one in the painting will be cared for again and the magic of her black cat familiar will return. And the one who is the scarecrow will only have the comfort, the cold comfort of karma to look forward to unless they soften and accept that they are worthy of forgiveness too. Um, when my understanding is with karma, it involves uh, you and another. You may be someone else's karma, they may be your karma. I, I don't really journey into that um, teaching very much, so I don't really have a lot of knowledge around it, but I have experience around it. And uh, my tip, for you with that would be to remember that not to dwell and to go into that situation or into that contract, that arrangement, uh, accept responsibility for your part of it and uh, release that contract, that need for the journey to continue. How does that happen? You do that by clearing your way through it there's other videos that you can watch for that sort of stuff or you can go work with someone that does um, trauma counseling regression work timeline therapy what else is there you could probably use kinesiology um, I want to say behavioral trauma techniques or something like that the psychologists that are working on those sort of things it's, there's a lot of places that you can go to to get help with this if you feel like this might be you but to remember that there is, with it, when there's karma, there's two. There, there's someone else or some others. There might be multiple others. You don't know what it is. Um, but I am looking at this from the perspective of the planet and what we've been doing in that space and what I've been doing in that space. So I always take self-responsibility. And back to what I was saying, my advice for you is to go and get help and work through this. But to also remember that, yep, you have a role in this, but there's others. So you might do all the homework and you might do all of the stuff, but you're still sitting there dwelling on this. It's because you haven't released the other. Um, the divination. So the divination message is what's the freaky message, right? That card flicked out. That's a divination message. A feeling of great loneliness, angst, even self-pity and what is called in you, a flatness and emptiness, a boredom. You must make this time to really understand how this came to be and to understand that it could not have come to be without some kind of contribution on your behalf. This is not to blame you or to blame another, but to understand the how of what has happened as best you can. By acknowledging the part which you have played, you will be given messages and opportunities to grow, to regrow the friendships that still have life in them. It's interesting. And you will know which ones to walk away from all, for all time. It is time to say sorry if you know you ought to and to allow yourself to say what has been done and why too. There is no blame, just understanding. But there must be an understanding of your own connection to this first and foremost. Kind words and sincere amends will create friendships. Insisting on being tough and frightening for self-protection will only bring more of this cycle, leaving one even more alone than they feel they are at present, and magic will stay far away. There has been an intense experience of jealousy, and there have been some very sticky, unhealthy energies you may have experienced. You need not feel you are empty. You too have your magic. Forgive yourself. Speak the truth, make amends, and watch your own magical abilities grow and thrive. Believing is a false argument, 
believing in a false argument, a fallacy, a construction that seemed real but was not. That's the straw man argument. It's pretty cool. So, uh, Oracle of Shapeshifters, Lucy Cavendish. Those cards, the shapeshifters come. So in this one, your shapeshifter is your black cat. Uh, but to also have a look at the scarecrow side of things. It's pretty cool. So, there you go. Mental Monday. Magic Monday. Having fun. Sharing ideas. Doing stuff. Will I ever share a logical video? Who knows? My essential oil videos tend to be quite practical. Um, any videos that have to do with working with the body and uh, those sort of things tend to be quite practical. Um, but when we're just talking, probably not. Um, so anyway, have a fabulous day. Enjoy whatever it is that you're doing. And I'll see you in one video soon. See ya!